Hi church, are you fat and flourishing? Well, the other day I, I asked uh, in a devotional, have you got lush lips? Maybe you think I'm becoming a little too over familiar. Uh, well, that might be the case, but uh, there's, a, there's a reason why I'm asking the question. Of course, are you fat and flourishing? Psalm 92.13 in the NIV talks about the righteous and says they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. And in the King James Version, it says they will be fat and flourishing. That's why I asked the question. It's not personal. Um, another version says this. They are full of sap and green. <laughs> I love that. So are you full of sap and green? The reason I ask this is um, I've been thinking about the whole process of ageing. Now, of course, there's a physical ageing, isn't there? And uh, recently come across this uh, uh, newspaper article. It talked about this uh, uh, Japanese lady who's 116 years old. Kane Tanaka, and she's the oldest person um, alive, at least I think she's still alive, or well, she was when I read the article. Um, and according to a scientist called David Sinclair, who is one of the leading scientists in the field of ageing, he believes that growing old actually isn't a natural part of life. It's a disease that needs a cure. And so he's written this book about, about this. It'd be an interesting book to buy. Um, now, um, he's not a Christian, and there's all sorts of ways I could take this as a message, of course. Um, but I'm going to just, you know, limit it to this whole thing of ageing. And I'm not thinking about physical ageing. I'm thinking about the ageing that's unseen. There's a, there's a decay, isn't there? There's a, an ageing that can take place on the inside. Um, and it can be a, an ageing of our, or a, decay, a decaying of our souls, or our emotional life, or our relationships. It can be a family or marriage, and this can take place under the surface without it being seen. And it means that we can actually come into latter life when we should be maturing as Christians because, you know, we are being transformed into, into the image of Christ um, from glory to glory. But we can come into latter life um, immature and ill-prepared because we haven't learned to age well on the inside um, and that's what I want to speak about for a few minutes uh, this morning. I want to do, an, and the next few devotionals I like to do on this particular subject of how we age and age well. How is it possible to get older and stay young? Now, not you know, some of us, has to be honest, I'm honest, are blessed with like this eternal youth. You know, there you go. Um, but uh, there's not many of us like that. Um, but how do we get older and yet stay young? One thing I would like to bring to your attention in this devotional is the importance of play. And a few years ago, I preached on this as a kind of one-off message because our God is a playful God. Have you um, not noticed that? Um, I believe play is kind of part of our DNA because God is a, cre uh, a playful creator. Um, if you don't believe me, look in the mirror. There you go. Sorry about that. That's not, again, meant to be a, an insult. But look in the mirror. God is very creative and very playful in his creation. Um, look at a giraffe. Look at a monkey. Look at a dolphin. Look at an elephant, a centipede, and tell me that God isn't a playful creator. Of course he is. Um, but, you know, we don't stop playing. This is not my quote, someone else's quote. We don't stop playing because we get old. We get old because we stop playing. And um, it wasn't uh, just a few years ago when I was uh, going to Eastgate and I was on a training course there and uh, part of one of the equipping teams that went out from that uh, particular course to local churches. I went to um, GCC in Upminster before GCC and HCF merged. And um, uh, I was part of the equipping team and we were doing what we called prophetic uh, appointments and um, uh, prophetic games that we were playing and um, one of these was to pair up with someone in the church and have a bucket in between you so I paired up with someone in the church it happened to be Alison Alison Rin and Alison was one side of the bucket and I was the other side and you had to look in the bucket and engage your prophetic imagination imagine what was at the bottom of that bucket for that person and then prophesy that over them and I prophesied over Alison and then when it came to her turn she looked in the bucket and said I'm sorry, Pete, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I see a, a duck, a rubber duck. And uh, I thought, wow, you know, she was almost embarrassed to tell me. But what she didn't realise was recently at that time, God had been speaking to me about the importance of play. 
something I've been learning at Eastgate was how playful God is. And it's part of our inheritance as children. We are his kids. And we do speak about, you know, our heavenly dad, don't we? And we talk about having a, a, a cuddle with our heavenly dad. Why not have a playtime with our heavenly dad? Because dads love to play with their kids. And as part of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. You know, it's not all kind of heavy Bible study and spiritual disciplines and prayer and fasting. But just that time when we can be with our heavenly dad and just have a playtime with him. I wonder what that looks like for you. This is the rubber duck um, that I got as a result of uh, that prophecy. And I have it on my desk to this day. So I was learning about the importance of playing with Jesus. And I haven't got time to share that with you so much now. I just want to leave that thought with you. What does that look like for you? Are you aging well? Are you fat and flourishing? Are you enjoying playtime with Jesus? I'll leave that thought with you. Be blessed in his name.